Welcome to Cardinal Rewind. I'm Alicia Caballero. And I'm Mark Trevino. Just a few weeks until the start of the spring semester and many athletic teams are taking part in some heavy competition. As we wrap up the middle of the semester, let's highlight some of the events that took place on campus. The Cardinal men have had an exceptional season this year, proving to have taken some of their tournament experience from last season to make a name for themselves in the Lone Star Conference. In early January, the men were ranked ninth in NCAA Division II basketball. The men would take on Midwestern State University, whom they lost last season while playing in the Elite Eight tournament. This would prove to be a chilling game. The 24th Annual Golden Harvest was held on October 23rd. Over 450 students volunteered. During the event, students collected canned donations to the San Antonio Food Bank and other charities. UIW-TV correspondent Justin Ryan Gomez highlights the event. Welcome to Cardinal Rewind. I'm Alicia Caballero. This year has been an exciting year for all the university sports teams, especially with the conference change. Even though the semester is at an end, some sports just do not stop hustling. Our top story today is a look inside spring practice training for the Incarnate Word football team. Cardinal Rewind reporter Lauren Taylor talked to some of the team members after the spring football game which we'll take a look at a little later on. But for now, let us take a look at what we can expect for the fall 2011 season. Well, the time has come before you know it, and welcome everyone to the 24th annual Light the Way at the beautiful University of the Incarnate Word. I'm Alicia Caballero alongside Erin Nichols, and we're going to be your hosts for tonight. Let's go ahead and start with the history of Light the Way. A teacher's assistant struck in the face by a stray bullet. Police are now investigating this mysterious shooting. In a nation of health care shortage, one San Antonio community is giving its students the opportunity to learn at a state-of-the-art facility. We're here after the gala and we're getting perspectives from people and what they thought of this event and it was just a great success. We're with UIW-TV and KUIW advisor Hank McDonald and he's going to give us his outlook on tonight's gala event. I think one of the best things that happened tonight was that you were able to see a lot of uh, students come together and put together a really nice event uh, for KUIW and UIW-TV. And uh, they've been working for a long time to uh, create this event, and tonight it really uh, came together. I'm here with Cardinal Rewind anchor Mark Trevino. Mark, what did you think of this year's game? Uh, I thought it was really good, you know, uh, just everything here. I'm really glad uh, we had the nice turnout. We had all the students and faculty here, and uh, it was just great to see all of uh, the broadcast media here together, all involved, and uh, it, it kind of showcased like what our, all of our hard work, work is, uh, you know, it's, it's paying off, you know, so I think this is a really good, really great evening for everybody. Thursday has a new name for some people. The new name is Jersey, in honor of this hit TV show, Jersey Shore. According to the New York Times on January 13th, the Jersey Shore had 8.9 million viewers, which is now MTV's biggest air date for any series. The show is most notable for its drama and lingos that draw people's attention. It's just the ridiculous of the characters and the drama. I love watching the drama. It's so funny. Here are two students who volunteered to perform some catchphrases. Oh yeah, Jersey Shore, yeah, you know. <laughs> it's t-shirt time. It has even made some people commit to doing their GTL. I gym, I tan, I laundry, I GTL. Contrary to what one might believe, some people do not like what the show's intended message has to offer. A bunch of idiots drinking, um, fighting, and bad haircuts. Until next time, reporting for entertainment, I'm Alicia Caballero, and back to you, Isenia.
We're celebrating Incarnate Word Day here at the back of the Natatorium, and we're about to get on this crazy ride with our ice creams. Yeah, yeah. are you having a good time? I'm having a good time. Are you having a good time? I'm having a good time. Let's spin this and let's eat our ice cream. This event has been prepared over about four weeks. Um, the turnout right now has been fairly well. We would like a few more people to fill the area a little bit more, but so far, so good. It's pretty cool. Even though it's tomorrow and we're celebrating, celebrating it today so more people can make it, yeah. it it's pretty cool. I love this cool, so, That's good. so I like it. The San Antonio Public Library is proposing a vision for the community so that people do not lose the majesty between books and technology. In building a greater San Antonio, Library Director Ramiro Salazar informs the community about the changes in technology and how they must push for the people to use libraries. Tom Frost Sr., who is a part of the Leadership Advisory Committee, is taking part in a six-month planning process to raise awareness of the traditional aspects of libraries in daily life within our city. Mr. Frost says he still comes to the library to use its desired purpose. In the old days, and these days too, I still come to the library for times when you need other services, other books, and other information. So it's a big part of anyone's life should be the library and learning how to use our language. There is a gap between libraries and technology. Many avid library goers are aware of this. One visitor, Arlene West, describes her love of reading books. To me, a reading is, is holding the book and turning the pages and going back to it. I use computers in my job all the time, but I much prefer the feel of books and actually the smell of them. I find them intriguing in, in new books or old books. Just... Reporting at the San Antonio Public Library, I'm Alicia Caballero. Holdcat is renovating business and the environment on San Antonio's east side. CEO of Holdcat, Peter Holt, and his company renovated a 22,000 square foot training and support center, which will be used for developmental training, payroll, and other support functions. This renovation will employ more than 60 people. For years, this area was dead in a doornail. And, uh, but uh, we're starting to see it come back. The bank, Walgreens down there, all of a sudden, you know, this area is starting to come back and we're glad to be part of it. This ribbon cutting event highlighted the new facility and the friendly green nature. Solar panels will generate about 40% of Holt's power. Overall, Holt is aiming for silver leadership in energy and environmental design certification on the newly renovated building. Reporting from the east side, I'm Alicia Caballero. At the beginning of a new semester, students are already facing issues on campus. The most problematic? Parking. UIW junior Tyler Rabb said the construction of the visitor stands at the football field has eliminated parking. We have to park across the bridge. There's the since they take out the took out the parking lot for the stands and the football stadium. There's not enough parking down here, so you have to park on the hill. We spoke to Chief of Police Jacob Golguna, who said there are approximately 2,700 parking spaces on campus. He said, at times it appeared we were close to filling our parking areas, but parking was still available, approximately 200 spaces. SGA Treasurer Yasmin Valencia assured students that the situation could be much worse. It's more of an issue of students trying to find parking closer to main campus. It could be worse. It could be like other campuses where there just isn't any parking, but we do have parking here on campus, which are our two main garages up on the hill. Reporting for UIW-TV, I'm Alicia Caballero, and that's The Word. The 8th Annual Chips and Salsa was held at Marion Ballroom on September 15th. The event was started by resident assistant Cecilia Anigas in 2001. The event is sponsored by Residence Life and CAB. The event for the first time ever had a live band, Tropicante, and featured San Antonio artists. 
Residence Life staff member Elizabeth Valerio commented on the turnout of the event. As you can see, it's, it's packed. A lot of people are being active in dancing and wanting to learn and being a part of it. And then the food. A dance contest that showed some extreme talent, lots of food and lots of cookies, and a live band to perform you sure are not going to want to miss next year's 9th Annual Chips and Salsa. Reporting for UIW-TV, I'm Alicia Caballero, and that's The Word.